Can you hear me, Jason? As long as you can hear, we're good. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. How are we doing? What's up, everybody? I'll be on video here shortly. I'm All good. Oops. How's everybody doing? Happy Monday or Friday or what day is it? I don't even know. <laughs> Always Monday. Woo! Feels like a whole week went by in a day. Oh. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Look who we got. Hi, guys. What's up? How you doing? Hi, everyone. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Represent. We got all the beautiful people in the house. <laughs> yeah. back. Megan's back. Jason's yeah. out the mower, lawn mowing. Look at that. Look at that. Sorry, my son's studying Japanese right next to me, so don't mind the background noise. I'll, I'll mute myself. Oh, are you studying Japanese? No big deal. He's just, yeah, they're, they're both studying. We're all learning languages this, this summer, and they got to choose their language, and he chose Japanese, so <laughs> kind of fun. That's a good choice. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you guys do whatever you want to do, you know, like you pick a language. And uh, I'm happy as long as they're working on it, you know. So, <laughs> so he's like, right there. <laughs> We're working on it. How is everyone? Excellent. We've been missing on you. Oh, I know. I, I feel like I don't even know the last time I was on here. Like in April, maybe? No, I think we had to before that one. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. At some know. point. <laughs> you're, always there. you're always there in spirit. We feel you. Yeah, I'm always there with you guys. Yeah, good. I'll be. Good to hear you laughing. Oh. Laugh. <laughs> good to see your face and good to hear. Well, good to hear your voice. Not necessarily I, see your face because I can't see you. I'll be up here in a minute. I'm just getting out of work. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> what language are you learning? Chinese. <laughs> now, what are you aspiring to be the uh, the Tower of Babel at your house? Everyone's going to know a different language. Wouldn't it be good if you each learned the same language? Like, <laughs> and then move to the next one? Or is that on purpose? <laughs> uh, I'm learning Chinese with a friend just to push my comfort zone and then my son sorry hold on let me um and my kids i just wanted to, them to get curious about language and and kind of stimulate them through the summer and so i let them pick their own so this is why i do eventually want to want them to work on spanish as well so we can speak on that together but 
um, just kind of helping them with their curiosity by giving them the option of what to what to choose this year. So well, they're already they can run the United Nations if they learn like five, six languages. I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it is. Learning languages is huge. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself. <laughs> That's actually a good. Uh, that's actually a good segue to <clears throat> kind of what we're talking about tonight. Um, you know, like the post I put up was about tuning in, finding your own frequency, and I use the analogy of a TV because, you know, like the visual of it, like tuning into the signal to get a better frequency or bigger signal, or uh, same with your radio. And now that we have so much digital stuff, not so much, but even even our digital radio will will go in and out if we're driving through a bad spot, just like our cell service will be in and out. It'll be broken up if we have disconnection from the satellite or the signal, the source. Uh, <clears throat> so I use that as an analogy because I'm glad that Christine brought up the language thing because look, it really is just, you know, what language are we speaking to one another? It doesn't have to be like Japanese or English or like that. I mean, I mean, truly on a frequency level, what are we saying to one another? Um, and then more importantly, what are we not saying to one another? Uh, I think that's the biggest one I always harp on is what's not being said. Uh, what are we uncomfortable of saying? In our own personal growth and our personal journeys, are we sharing all these things that we're doing with <clears throat> the all the circles in our life. So sometimes we do the things like this right here, like this connect group and we share with each other and, and, and try to grow in our, our personal and our spirit and all that stuff. And, and then we go live our lives and we're not doing much of it, or we're not so keen to share with certain people in our life because we already know their predisposition of the judgment they might put on that idea because that's not who you were when you met them. These are mostly the closest people in our lives um, that we just have to consider already. Well, they just don't get it. Or they wouldn't understand me. Or I already know their reaction. So I'm just not going to speak about it or be that in front of them. Um, and I think that <clears throat> lends to a lot of uh, traps for us. It lends to a lot of inconvenience in our life. Um, and I want to talk about turning inconvenience into pleasure. You know, how can we how can we change what those inconveniences are? Because it's not always as simple as just turning to uh, say your parents that have a hard line on these things and are always going to be that way to you. And it's not your responsibility to change them, but you also want to be yourself and be free and do, make your own choices and have them support you in it or a spouse or anybody. And I'm glad you segue with the, the, the kids with the language. You want them to do whatever they want to choose to, to decide what they choose for their life, what they learn and, what they understand. And um, I think so often we get in our own way of <clears throat> allowing our growth to be seen by too many or seen by everybody, more, more importantly. It's only when we allow that to happen is that we, that we can actually have actionables and, and act upon the changes that we're doing in the secret or in the dark or in the closet or online for an hour a week. And then we live this other life or, or maybe, maybe we're not ready to tell people around us that we're doing that. Cause they'll, they'll, they'll give us the, well, you never, you've never been spiritual. You've never been to that. You know, that's the easy answer because people do know us based on what we've given them. And a lot of times we don't give them all of us. And it's most of the time because it's the conversation we're having in our own head about what they're going to think about the real us. And I think it's super important to really lean into if we're going to invest time into anything that is the true value of anything is, is not money or the <clears throat> the value we put on things financially is really the the value of our personal growth our time the, the effort we put in the things that we consider important to one another ourselves mostly and then truly then sharing that to show that our journey you know so we can be witnessed by it not to uh, not be scared of it or what might people might think or the change we've gone through. Um, it's really easy. It's really easy to hide these things because there are so many, uh, what I would call restrictions or in place 
laws, if you will, um, and then the sense of rules that limit us to truly believing in anything for ourselves. Like sometimes we just put it aside because that's not the order of which it's supposed to go. Um, I was having a conversation today. Why do we, why do we put the dream at the end of the order? Why do we say, well, I'm going to get this house first and then I'm going to build it up and I'm going to plan and I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to sell it one day and get this house. And I'm going to, you know, this car for now. Why do we always do that? Why do we put limitations on this? And why do we put it in a row of like, that's, that's the height I want to reach. Why can't that be first and have unknown come all after it? You know, when you put the, the hardest things first or the most wanted things first, sometimes you push yourself to extremes and levels that you don't know you're capable of. But if you set goals under your expectation of your total growth, you will meet them. That's called failure. Like that's, that's what that opposite balance is. You, you can meet that quite easily. And that's, I think that's why we put them in order because we give our, ourselves a chance to have small victories instead of setting ourselves up what we think might be a huge failure. And I think, I think we need to switch that model a little bit. I think we need to <clears throat> understand it's okay to take care of ourselves uh, unconditionally. Uh, and that doesn't mean that if you have other people in your life that you have to take care of or kids or, or, or you, your sister's kids are put on you or you, whatever it is, a circumstance that got put on you and you have higher responsibility that you have to stop putting yourself first. And you have to stop showing that you have time for yourself too. Um, because we don't, we don't truly have to like live inside the rules that are put up for us. You know, we don't have to, we don't have to be inconvenienced by these rules. We don't have to stand in line because somebody told us to, you know, it's not about your turn. It's about when you choose. It's when you decide it's your turn. All right. And that's not like, the visual of like you budgeting in line and lunch line, knocking kids over and eat first. Like, I don't mean like be an asshole about it. I mean, like you can truly choose to not stand in that line to just eat that when you can just move over and make your own line and choose to eat whatever you want or choose to do whatever you want. It's not about taking somebody else's place in line. It's about just choosing your own line. It's about choosing your own ideas and thoughts and rules for your life. What do you think you're living by? You know, do you have morals? Do you treat people well? Do you, you know, but when you start to feel inconvenienced by your own life, super dangerous. Like how can we, how can we turn that into pleasure? How can we turn our inconveniences into pleasure? What, how can we, when the discipline takes over our motivation, right? Like, I just don't, I just think discomfort is the true learned of everything. Like if we can, truly be uncomfortable in situations and, and maybe have a slight doubt. Like, can I get that? Can I attain that? It's going to push you to see if you can, but if it's so easily set, because that's what everybody's doing, what's what we're doing. You get out of school and then you do this and then you get out of college and then you do this. And then you are supposed to get a car and you're supposed to be with somebody. You're supposed to be married by a certain time. Other people are having kids. It's always an age thing and a value thing. And there's a numbers, um, <clears throat> attached to a lot of things. And it's funny, the conversation went the same place of like, we learn, we learn all this, this stuff in school, but we're not learning, we're learning like the, the numeral mathematics, not the mathematics of life. Like, what if I was put in a situation, I got a job and my roommate now is Japanese and he doesn't speak English. That to me, that's equation, that's math. That's understanding what do I do next? Do I lean in and learn it? Do he, does he learn English? Do we learn a, a language that we can speak together to coexist in the space? What are we doing? Like, what is that math? That's math to me. That's real life, applicable math that we have every day. Not five plus two is seven. You can learn that in the spot at a register. Who gives a shit? That math's easy. The math of life is the hardest part. Like, I'm gonna buy a house because that's the thing next. And, I'm going to do these things, but holy cow, you have to have an inspection. I didn't know this law. I didn't know the taxes. Who, whoever tells you that? You, you're kind of learning things on the spot about life as you go. And then when you're learning them, it's really just you. You're taking data from yourself to learn it. Like there's not statistics, like real statistics is 
a massive amount of data gathered into one and what works, right? Most of us are going through that experience for the first time by ourselves on our own. Because we haven't learned that math. We haven't learned life math. We buy the house, we feel good, we do the right things. Everybody's saying, you gotta get inspection, you gotta do this, gotta real estate. You close a deal, it's 30 days, all these things. You get in there and the freaking roof has a hole in it. You didn't plan for it. You didn't, you didn't know. Like all these things are really what I'm talking about in, in the way of, uh, I think, tuning to our own frequency. Like what truly is your frequency? What do you truly need on an on a, a individual basis? What's going to make you happy? It can, and, and truly, I believe it can be a mansion, 10, 30 cars, uh, airplanes, helicopter bringing you where all these things, that can be it. There's, there should be no uh, uh, ego involved in what you want for you because as long as you're still in the service of yourself and other people, it doesn't matter that you're winning. You're not a bad person because you're rich. You're not a bad person because you want extravagant things. You're not a bad person because you travel all around the world and make right. feel guilty because it looks like you do nothing. If you're doing the things to get there, then you deserve what you want, what you seek out. It doesn't have to be. I feel like there's this level of us going, I want all these things, but then you get, we all get to this point where we start to have our guilt creep in. Like, I want that, but I mean, it seems a little ridiculous to spend that on myself or yeah, only rich people do that. We start to like talk ourselves out of what just truly is coming on our, on our, on our heart at the moment. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want, you know, a thousand dollar pair of shoes. So what? If it's, it's for the reason, sometimes a thousand dollar pair of shoes last longer than $30 pair of shoes. It's actually good math. Sometimes it doesn't like, so I'm a person that spent a lot of my time in, in malls and never left anything. Cause I talked myself out of purchasing anything because I didn't need it. Had the money, could have bought anything. Talked myself in two hours out of deserving any of it. So I leave with nothing. But what is that? It's that level of our self-worth and what we think are the rules, what we think like, well, that's for this certain person or category or idea. It's, it's not about that. It's about if we stripped money away from anything being valuable, it truly should. If you look at anything, do you need it? Do you want it? Have it. What does it take to get it? Right? Like, why aren't we looking at it like that? And I think that becomes really tied into who we believe we are, what, we, what we're worth, what we think we deserve. It should be constantly starting with us first. If we're starting with us first. Like we always talk about in this thing, how can we fail anybody? If we're always pouring into us first, we're pouring... We, we every single morning we go out to the car, we check the fill, do the gas, make sure the filters, every checkpoint you could possibly be in a car, forever that thing will last for you. But how many people actually are checking their oil? Like honestly, I'm in, I'm in the world of cars. Let's be real honest. Who's doing it when they're supposed to? Not many people. You don't have to raise your hands and embarrass yourself. I know because my dad's in the car business, I've been in it. And how many times I've, I've opened a gap, the thing and there's like zero oil in the car. How long has it been? Uh, since I bought it. We don't think about things that we're not seeing or don't understand sometimes. And that's okay, but can you imagine if we did the things that were most important to us? Like our engine is our heart, our mind, our physical body, our space. Um, but so often, especially if you're, you live in this empathic world or, or, or any of you, I know you come to this for the same types of reasons that I even started it, is we give, we give a shit about other people. We give a shit about ourselves. We want to grow. We want to share. That sometimes becomes even harder because we then put other people first more often, right? Which is a completely unbelievable skill. There's a lot of people that just don't. They don't care about anybody else but themselves. But you got to, got to pour in you first. Every day when you leave, it's got to be you first so that everybody else can get the best of you all the time. So you can literally have turn these inconveniences into pleasures. Because we all have them. We're all going to go through them. Right? What, what viewpoint are we looking from? Conversation with ourselves in our own head. And it's usually us talking us out of something. Us talking us down. Us talking us 
that's not me right now. Or <clears throat> sometimes we talk ourselves in a position where we believe, we start to believe that, well, I'm, no, you know, I've never really cared about money, so I don't think about it. You don't have to lie to yourself. You can think big. You can think of seeing yourself in a mansion, getting a helicopter ride to work every day. You can think about anything you want. It doesn't mean that you have to make that your goal to search it out and, and go for it. It doesn't mean you're going to have it one day. It doesn't mean if you think harder about it, you'll get it. It just means that you can think about both ends of the spectrum. Without relativity to what it is like up here, when it's like down there, how would you know anything besides what you lived? Right? How dare we? How dare we assume that rich people just have it made? You know, how dare we assume that poor people that live on the street for some reason have it way worse than you do? I've met some super happy people that live on the street. Truly happy. Because they don't have the tensions and the anxieties and the worries that we put upon ourselves every day. They've let it go already. Now we look at it like, well, you don't have a house. How could you? Not about it, right? So always the conversation we're having with ourselves we got to be the architect of the unseen we got to make sure that we're trying to build things that don't exist these games like minecraft all these kids are playing where you build these freaking cities on these games you spend like hours and hours of building these virtual worlds and this metaverse and all this crap that's happening in your head that wasn't that wasn't like a this isn't something made up by some genius some genius was just going what if what was in my head we can make a video game and make people dig into it it's already right here we've been doing that it's called imagination, right? We got to be creative in our imagination and, and see that the unseen is completely doable and attainable because we've seen it over and over in history. The things that were considered impossible became possible. And then everyone was just like, okay, you know, the people that were deemed crazy died and then they became genius. You think this is some kind of coincidence? It's, it's because as a mass, we want to be led by leaders and we don't believe in it until we believe in it. And then it just goes like that. It becomes a light switch on the wall. It's all against until you're for. That's what masses do. They don't have an independent brain. They got a bunch of them. So they have to collectively agree with something before they all agree with it. So until they don't, that person's crazy. Your ideas are crazy. That sounds crazy, man. Nobody else is doing that. I know that's why it's brilliant. That's why you're brilliant. Nobody else is showing up every week. No one else is putting time and thought into it. Nobody's having conversations that are in depth to have to make you think about you, yourself, other people around you, us in this group. Like, you're already incredible. It's already happening. It's, it, you are a genius. You, you are different. You're solo. You're isolated for a reason because you're different. If you didn't have those feelings, you would be part of the mass and you'd be numb to it. You wouldn't hear shit. Okay, you'd be in the matrix and that little bubble, that pink bubble thing, plugged in, sleeping, floating in the middle of nothingness, having program tell you everything to do every day. So <clears throat> it's special to feel alone it's special to feel isolated in thoughts it's special to feel uh like you're a little crazy in your mind with your thoughts and by crazy i don't mean you want to murder somebody i mean by you have some creative thoughts that you want to express to others set apart That's, set apart is a good way to say it set apart i <laughs> just yeah. wanted to give it to you go ahead yeah. sorry yeah. set apart and that's that's truly it. it's just we have to embrace these, these moments. Well, I, I always used to call them moments of uh, loneliness because I felt like I was the only one feeling them. I felt isolated a lot. I felt alone a lot. I felt like I couldn't share ideas. I still feel like I can't share some of the ideas that are happening in my head because I just don't think people, some people are ready to have the conversation. Um, but those aren't, those aren't on the, my good and bad list of life. Those aren't on the bad column. They're on the good. Right? Just because some words we've grown up with have negative connotation to them does not mean they're negative. Manipulation is not negative. It's the molding of something. <laughs> like It's the most positive word I can think of. But we, we use it as a weapon on bad situations. Like, I got manipulated by that person. Well, I could say that all of you manipulated me. 
And that'd be a very good thing because this, this group, this thing that's manipulated my life, it's molded and shaped who I am. Sounds pretty good to me. Right, so I want I want to turn these inconveniences into pleasure and these these things that we think that we have to burden in life into <clears throat> into opportunity um, to just see that we have to put all of ourselves first and really understand we don't live in the in the lines or the walls of anybody's rule. It truly is yours. You know, we have an option of all of it. Truly, there's not this like, well, if I don't, then, or if I do, then. No, it really isn't. We live in the freest country in the entire world, the most prosperous country in the entire world, which is ironic because we have the most non-working people and the poorest people too. So it's it's a little irony it's happening, but that's what comes with massive amounts of freedom. When you have nothing but maximum freedom, you have everything happen. Can't solve it. Too much freedom can be bad, but we have it. So we have to embrace it. You know, don't let it slide by you. You have it. You have the freedom of choice every day. You have the, the chance to lean into your own brain every day. The frequency stuff I've talked about in the past is a training exercise. You can use EEG to set your frequencies in your brain and actually change how you start your day in the middle of the day if you're having a bad moment. There are tools to get in the right frequency that we admit from our brain to live in better choice, I call it. You're in a space of better choice. So the clarity in your mind your engine's running on full things, a full tank of gas, the oil's fresh, the transmission fluid's good, your engine's running as most efficient as it can. So when something comes to you, you're making the most clear choice with what you've already had in your life and tools you've had. So there's a way to navigate that in your life. It's not like some people have it and some people don't. The people that have figured it out know how to use it. Right, so there is a frequency that we can find, really tune into. That's why I put that up there. Is if we're between ten and fourteen gigahertz of frequency in our brain, we're running on a high level of motion or or clarity that allows us to to navigate any great decision, poor decision. What's happening? What do I do next? Do I fight this guy? Do I crash into this car and run him off the road because he cut me off? Like all these small things we have to do runs at an efficient level when we have massive clarity and. We have control over that. It's not just wake up and say, I'm a good person. It's not just keep your heads up in the clouds all day and make sure your shoulders are back. It's not just always these small tools. It's like, well, oh, smile more, it's less muscles. All these things help because there's, there's all postural things we can do that are facts. But truly, you have control in within the frequency of your brain every single day. So we have we have it sitting right here. Sometimes we um, set limitations on ourselves to believe that we're good enough for the result that comes from it. And I think that's, that's the tough part. I think when we set this standard for ourselves that do we deserve that level of me? You know, I spent so many years uh, saying I didn't deserve what I thought I can get. And then I got it and I still didn't deserve it. And I just ignored it. I didn't, I didn't like celebrate it because I was like, oh, I must have got here on accident. Like how, how that's fucked up to think about. Like I, I'm proving to myself that I'm there. The thing I said I couldn't do, I'm, I'm done. And I still go, yeah, but that's, it was probably a mistake. Or it was probably habit stance or I got lucky or I, this person helped me. It's just not true. It's, it's just truly, we can do whatever the hell we want as long as we set our expectations to also equal how we feel about the earth's health. Are you, is somebody, oh, Amber, did you, were you talking? No. I wasn't talking. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, I, I do want to open the floor. Um, if anybody wants to speak on this, uh, this was just something that came up for me today and that I was, I was sitting around thinking about. And um, most of it came from probably, I think the idea that I still have a lot, a lot to go. I'll tell you exactly how it came up. <clears throat> I think I still feel like today um, there's a lot that I won't share with a lot of people. I mean, Amber 
probably knows the most. I could probably talk to the most deep things with my sister, but that's just a different level of trust. And I know where her head's at too. So, um, but I still think there's a lot that I keep back. So I still have this balancing act between the things I'm doing and wanting to do and things that I feel like I'm in service of other people. And I truly am, am blessed to do what I want to do in the church and this real raw and flaw thing. And all those things that I'm doing that, I, that really pumps energy in me, trying to marry that with my life beside it. And I feel like sometimes when I'm holding back, those don't line up. You know, so I'm still feeling a little bit of, there's days where I'm still feeling a little bit of my old me of like, I don't want to influence somebody in the wrong way ever. You know, like I don't want something I, I've said about myself. That's why I try to gear everything that I speak about, about my personal choices and what I've done and what I've experienced instead of tell you guys what I think should be done. Everything I ever talk about is about me. Everything I ever talk about is it's happened to me or is happening to me. Um, I never want to come off uh, okay. telling you guys like, here's how you should live your lives. I never want to come off misunderstood that you think that you should do anything I'm doing. Because there's a lot lost in communication and interpretation. And I think one of my biggest fears in life of following this path that I truly love is somebody misunderstanding me and them getting hurt by it. You know, something that I, I, I can't quite wrestle yet that I'm still dealing with. So I think it came up today like that because I still feel like I'm holding guidelines on my own life and I'm still holding a little judgment on myself of what I think I am. Um, because just as it was nice, we, you know, I talked to Jason, you know, called me after last week and, you know, just thanked me for the thing. And, and I got emotional just from him calling me because I knew what it meant to him, not because what it meant to me, like I felt it in him and I got emotional. Um, so for those moments, you know, but I always see things from both sides. I see for any moment like that, it could be one that's unspoken that somebody's gone down a path and I can't not think about that. So I think this is why this topic came up. It's like constantly fine tuning what we're doing, constantly taking a look at it. Even if we're watching the channel in the series, go up and mess with the antenna a little bit. You might get a better, you might get a slightly better frequency out of yourself. You might get a slightly better viewing pleasure, right? We turn that inconvenience into a pleasure. All you had to do is move it around a little bit or like my dad did white trash now just put a little tin foil because you couldn't even want to buy the antenna you just used tin foil and shoved it in the hole it's like <laughs> how cheap do you got to be but it, it worked but there was a better way we just didn't know it you know what i mean our dad was very convincing as a salesman <laughs> he uh he convinced us a lot of things that he did were the smartest way uh, and that's how amber and i grew up learning so um amber i know your hand went up and put it down go ahead yeah, well, so I just want to, there's so many things I want to say. I'm going to try to say them as fast and as clear as possible because I was like trying to keep them in order. Let me just start out by saying, Michael, like, honestly, I, I don't know if you're actually wearing a Sriracha t-shirt, yeah. but pretty much your Sriracha. I am the like, cop, from, by the way, in China. Yeah. Yeah. So like from the outside to the rest of the world, because just because I'm your sister, like we lived in different worlds. We had different personalities, different friends, different music likes, all kinds of stuff. And so I'm just still like somebody on the outside of you as being perceived. And you're like Sriracha, man. You just make everything a little like better and a little like peppier and more fun and more exciting and tastier and just all the things. So God bless you. We need Sriracha and um, you got to be afraid. You got to you got to have a lot of confidence um, to know that you're brave enough to get up and just be vulnerable and share things that so that other people can feel relevant to um, I wanted to say when you started out and you said like what we all want, like different, like what would you want if you could have it? And, you know, obviously most of everything that comes out of our mouth is a projection of the things that are on our mind, our heart, what we're dealing with, what we're seeing, what we're witnessing, whatever. Um, sorry, Harold, my dog. Uh, I just want to say that I, what came up for me when you said it was, I don't 
want to feel judged. And I, without ego, like, I don't need to be like Alicia Keys or famous or anything or super special to the world. I just want to feel valued by the people that I love and respect, I think. So there were things that came up that were like way before like house and money. Like, yeah, I mean, who does, I mean, money's just flowing. I mean, we can get to it, hopefully like water. It's always, gonna, there's going to be some kind of currency or something we can trade or barter. But mm -hmm. what I I think what most people really want is all kinds of like what you were saying, like kind of deep, deep secretive things, like whether it's success or beauty, or if I was just a little taller, if I was just a little more, this, a little more, that a little, whatever it is, you know? And I think it's a lot smaller than oftentimes a mansion, even though, you know, I guess most people would be okay with a mansion. Um, <laughs> And then I just wanted to say, along with um, just the two more things that um, one, think about like Chad or, um, you know, us in all of our given fields and like what we're doing in life and service and trying to be out here, even in our connect groups, just trying to be vulnerable, trying to be of service, trying to help people to grow. You know what? We're all witnessing each other at all different times and none of us are perfect at any given time. And like even you know, whether we're talking about God or the universe or whatever it is, like nothing's perfect. You walk through a forest, all the trees are completely different and there is no perfection. Um, you know, and we, I think our standards sometimes are a little bit too high for ourselves because we don't feel worthy. And we just got to keep remembering that like, we're all witnessing each other. And I just want to say one last thing that the example of that would be like, again, you and I like two people that know each other like through work or because they're family or because they're friends or whatever it is, they may know each other in one circumstance, but maybe in another circumstance, they don't know each other, mm -hmm. whether that's at church or at a meeting or in front of certain people or whatever it is. And through travel, I, I kind of started to notice who I was in new group settings. And, you know, for most of my life, I was very confident in you know, I don't know, just talking too much, <laughs> you know, and I learned kind of, especially putting myself in a lot of uncomfortable situations and, and a lot of group settings with strangers that be the anthropologist, like sit and sit in quiet silence. And like, don't they say something about the smartest man in the room is the most quiet man, because he's really taking it all and observing it like the old tribal fishermen or, um, you, never you know, the people who have observed nature and like, yeah. So it's like, if I just kind of sit and observe, I don't have to show up and be everything. I could know, I could know tons more than, you know, maybe 90% of the people in the room, but I don't, they don't necessarily have to know that about me. I don't have to prove anything to anyone. God loves me. I'm working on loving me. And, you know, I try to give as much love to the world as possible. So I don't know. I just love everything about the conversation tonight. And when we talk about frequency, you know, some people have to quantify it by science and be able to, you know, see it and read it in those ways. And some people can just feel when the frequency is right. And when you're loving and living in integrity, the frequency is right. And when you're singing and you're dancing or you're in nature, the frequency is right. So just like think less and just show up as you and you're all enough and we're all enough. Yeah. That was all great. That was all great points. Um a funny tidbit of what you just said, you, you know, feeling <clears throat> we asked that question yesterday and we were talking like, what do you envision yourself? We played that game. Amber has this, this card game where we were pulling cards and for Father's Day, by the way, fa happy Father's Day to everybody, whatever you did, I saw you raise your dad, if you have him or not. Um, a bunch of us got together and kind of did the no dads club. All of us that have lost our parents decided to not spend it and not do anything, but spend it together and start something different. <clears throat> so we did that yesterday. And Amber bought this card and we were pulling these cards and it was like very deep thought provoking cards. And it was like, you pull it out and say it and then everybody goes around. And it was like, what do you think of yourself? Or what, how, how do you think that you're a better partner in your relationship for communication? It's like, oh shit, people are like, wait, what? This is getting personal? <laughs> I thought we were playing like a trivia game. Um, but it was funny because our friend Jess is always a very deep thinker and like right away without even like questioning anything. He's like, I just envisioned myself being cuter, I guess. <laughs> and like, he just, I just like, he's like, not just like hot, but like, 
I just always envisioned me being like just a little cuter than I am. And I just, it's always kind of bugged me. <laughs> we're, like, we're like laughing, but he was serious, but he wasn't, but he was. And it was, uh, it was nice. Cause I think sometimes uh, the space you're in with people helps with your insecurity to speak out about yourself. Um, and this is what this has been. Why I said that is to say that this has been that for me. Uh, it, it's not, it's not something that's come easy to me in the past to like share personal things about myself or like be vulnerable as Amber said, but it is truly the people you, you hold company with that allows you to make it feel natural. And that's what you guys do for me. So I appreciate that because otherwise it just wouldn't be, wouldn't be a thing. So I appreciate you sharing that Amber. All that's, all that's uh, super important. I'm glad that you picked up on that. <clears throat> um, Megan or Christine, I want to give you a chance to Say so. I haven't mean, seen you. You're kind of both in and out, but anybody want to share anything? I'll just share, share something. So uh, something struck a chord with me that I that said at the beginning, mm -hmm. and you did, um, and that's that you know you don't have to settle for for the first step in what your goal is, right? Like if you have a goal of like, hey, I want the mansion, like you don't have to start at the starter home. There is a way, and like so, it's I think there's something that that comes into that, um, and that's um, really allowing yourself to put a put creating creative thinking caps on and allowing yourself to do things a different way than what the what the average person does them just because everyone follows this one model doesn't mean that you have to especially if god put a goal on your heart or god put a desire on your heart or you just like had something pop into your mind that was like you know i think this would be really great like it doesn't mean that like you have, have to follow the same structure as everyone else right and and in that sense, like it's great to be set apart. And I think what Amber said about there is no perfect, but I think the perfection is that we all are different. That's where perfection lies is in the differences, uh. right? So like, as we're going through these things, cause I struggle a lot with, um, with uh, oh gosh, imposter syndrome, right? And like, I mean, I've struggled with it for years. I used to call my dad and I'd be like, I don't know why these people asked me to do this. Like, I'm not equipped to, to lead this conversation. These people have PhDs and I don't even have a degree. You know, yeah. like I, I would literally like have these conversations with my dad and he's like, they literally asked you to have these, to lead this because you're capable. You know, you're the only one. Why are you allowing yourself to go through that thought process? So like, look at your difference as a strength and then realize that you are already equipped, right? To achieve it. It's just about being creative and how you arrive there. I love that. So, right, that's my, those are my two cents. And I love what you said. And I understand because I'm the same way about sharing and yeah. being vulnerable with people. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why it was, it was so quiet from the start. We started this thing a year, year, year plus ago. <laughs> it, it's, when I was not talking, it's quiet. And uh, even at the beginning, I wasn't sharing a, a ton of the vulnerable stuff, but that's what it is. It's building trust and, and confidence in uh, yourself and the people around you supporting you. Um, I think it's a huge deal what you just said. It's uh, it's hard for us to <clears throat> think that somebody wants to hear what we have to say um, because there's some level of uh, importance in that statement. If people want to hear what I have to say, that I must be have some kind of level of importance and that in itself can give you this feeling of, of anxiety like well why because I don't feel that way um like who am I like who am, why, why are they reading me like that's that happens to me like all the time so yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think it's I think it's a massive thing to think about because I think we all have something truly to do or say in this world and uh we only have a moment to do it and say it and my moment and is our lifetime and can I just add to both of those comments is that, remember, we're the vessel through which things are happening. We're the vessel through which communication is coming through or healing is happening or holding space. We're just a vessel. If you looked at like polarity therapy and like energy circles around the earth and around humans and, and back to frequency, you'll see that there's like in Arizona, there's like a vortex. There's an area where the energy comes in and an area where the energy comes out. And so 
if we're, we're simply a straw, if you think of it, like in the most simple terms and the energy from God or the heavens or the universe or whatever it is, the frequency is flowing through us into like a conduit into anything that we touch or come in contact with. So that's where the importance comes from. It's not of ego. We're taught that if we speak or, or we're seen that it's bad and that's ego and that's pride and that's against God. And that's really when we're, we're not, it's not about speaking to hear ourselves speak. We are being a vessel through which healing occurs. That means that what we have to say is coming down from God. We're not trying to, if, if we're really, really walking the walk and trying to live in integrity and being right. really accountable with what we have to say. That's a good analogy. It's perfect. I mean, that's, if you look at it as energy and plugged in a wall, some people need to be plugged into you. And that's less about maybe them even thinking you're a super important person on a pedestal more as they feel your frequency and need to be plugged into it. Um, that's a good, that's a great analogy. So that's why we have to be so humble too. Like we got to be really humble about it. Like I, you know, I'm I, obviously we're supposed to be meeting right now. I'm not even sure where this is coming from. I say that a million times a day. Like I'm not even exactly sure why we're having this conversation right now, but I know it's for a reason. Trust me when I, I've seen my own patterns in life for 46 years, I continue to show up in places right where someone needs to plug into something. And I don't even know why, but I've, I've learned myself by watching and seeing that there's usually a good result at least for for them if not me yeah 100 <clears throat> percent. megan you got anything you want to share how are you feeling i'm good <laughs> yeah just uh, in. what just taking it in you want to share anything oh Can no i just sit that? and watch and listen <laughs> i always take it in good good well you keep showing up so obviously <laughs> Barely. I mean, I was sick and then I don't know. Everything just happens on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but well, people people usually present Monday as the worst day of the week. So maybe we need to change up your thought process. I don't know. I think it is. Start one on Monday. <laughs> what? Switch Monday with Friday in your head. <laughs> yeah, Fridays are better. <laughs> um, no, I appreciate you always showing up and, and being here. So uh Portia, anything you wanna? add or share um i just want to say that um it's about you know we talk about this in service but a lot of people are thirsty and it's about staying hydrated you're one choice away every day we're one choice away from changing our lives and like in any moment this present moment to change it all we need to do is make the choice and we have the power to make that choice. And we have the power of what we put into our minds and what we put into our bodies. And a hard truth of life is everything is a story. We can make a story up about everything. And two of the biggest stories people have are stories around money and stories around time, right? I don't ever have enough money. I don't have enough time, right? And money is just a mindset. It's a belief, right? And if you want more, you're going to have to change your beliefs around it to attract in more of that abundance right and the thing that will change your energy more than anything else is learning that when you're in your own frame when you trust yourself you trust your beliefs you trust your words your actions you trust your standards and your values and you trust that you know what's best for you even if it doesn't make sense to anyone else right and what you're talking about a lot is when you're living in someone else's frame because when you're in your own frame you when you are least attached to the outcome yet you're the most magnetic and you're at this higher frequency and the higher your frequency the more you attract and that's how you create your abundance right and here's the thing like a lot of this is going to stem from the abandonment wound the abandonment wound when we're in childhood like we make this choice when we're in childhood that something's wrong with us and thinking that i must tune myself to others to gain safety right because the challenge is that when we then are doing anything that we can to make other people happy, to get their approval, to get their validation, to be understood and to fit in. And that's, that's basically people pleasing, right? And whatever, and, and we, and what we are doing is we abandon ourselves when we go and we say, okay, I'm going to tune myself to this person's frame, right? And we're tuning our frequency to a lower vibration. And it's going to push us further away from the things that we do want in this life. And so like you had said, like, when we think of this like a radio station, 
when you tune your frequency, your station to this frequency of what you want, whether that is love or fear, right? Or anxiety or gratitude, that's the experience that you'll have, right? So you're just going to get more of it. And I loved how you talked about like, you have these ideas and you have these dreams and they don't have to make sense to anyone else. And the most important thing is, is when we walk in passion and we're passionate about something, it puts us into this high frequency, right? And it's one of the best ways that we can tune our own frequency is when we do follow those dreams and we do follow those ideas and we can't not go after it just because it doesn't make sense to someone else or our family or someone else can't see it, right? It's remembering that God gives it to us because it's not supposed to make sense to anyone else. And I think that we have to remember too that no matter what happens to us, everything is always a gift. And we have to ask ourselves, what can I learn from this? What is God trying to teach me? Like, what is the, how can I grow from this? No matter how difficult the circumstances are, how much we're met with resistance or when we are met with resistance, asking ourselves what inside of me has to change, right? Like yeah. what, what is, what, where's coming it from me? So I think just looking at everything too, as it's a gift and you know, what can we take Always. away from it? Always. I love that. I love that. I love that. I want to, the tuning into other people, things a massive part. I love that you brought that up because it really is not just us tuning our own fork and our own antenna. It's, it's really making sure that we don't get locked into somebody else's antenna. We're sharing that with them um, because we feel at the moment that we can't afford our own. Uh, don't tune into the wrong things. I want to, I kind of, kind of wrap it up with share a conversation I had once about this frequency. When I first started learning about it, um, one of these, these mentors of mine in this space put it to me like this. He said, if you're, you know, you've been in your car and you're driving and that you have your favorite station on that, that one sun comes on, everybody has something and that like brings you to life, no matter what your day is going and you're jamming out in the car and you're singing to it. And you're feeling what Amber is describing very well as that is your, that is the frequency you want to be in. That's when you feel most of yourself and free and unjudged and no vulnerability. And because something comes out in you that allows you to just start singing in the shower, singing in the car. But he used the car analogy because he said, your favorite station's on, it's clear, you're blasting, you have great speakers in your car and you're driving along and you start to lose the signal. He goes, you have to be able to hone and understand what that great moment was it's usually within a couple of minutes. And sometimes true, that's all you get some days of this high level frequency is the length of a song, your favorite song. And then it's gone because you drove through a bad area of frequency or you're, you're going into a different part of your life where you can't hear it anymore. Um, the idea is to always drive back to that space, to get into that, uh, the moment, to recognize it when it comes up to, so you know what it is. And that's what you have to be more like. And, <clears throat> He always talked about like you you've been driving through the woods where it starts like cutting out and then all of a sudden it changes to a different channel from a different part of the county you're in. It's not even the same music and you're disappointed. That's the he said, recognize it like that, because that's what's happening in your life. Sometimes you're in good frequency and you get tuned into somebody else's bullshit. And you accept it because that's where you're driving. And that's not that's not the point. It's to understand what your frequency truly is, what you want to listen to, what moves you, what frees you up, what allows you to just to be the full you and scream when you suck at singing and you're singing, the windows are open and you're screaming, yelling. They can, people can hear you singing, driving by more than they can hear your radio. Like this is high frequency stuff. This is below the shoulders, not mustard stuff that's up in your head and then and thinking through stuff. It's total freedom because something triggered you to be there. And that is you being in your frequency. So Sometimes you, you lose it because we do. Sometimes you are connected and lost in somebody else's frequency. Sometimes you move outside the county and you just you get your channel changed and you didn't want it. You thought you're listening to 1057. It's like, that's not what 1057 is 20 miles down the road. Um, <clears throat> so I thought it was a great analogy because it's everybody knows that feeling you get of happiness. It's like nothing matters. Even if you got fired or you don't know how to pay your bills that day, or you have a massive breakup relationship. You don't know if you're gonna feel better and you're, you're, you're down or you're depressed or you're sleeping a lot. 
even when you're in your dark, there's moments of frequency that makes you feel like fireworks alive. And it could be as simple as a song coming up because you feel like that can be, you can be our authentic self and you're sliding around the kitchen or you're dancing within your underwear. Like those are the moments that we have to hone what that feeling is and apply them to everything else. I'm not saying you got to go to work in your underwear and sing and dance around the office, but I'm saying you should bring that energy of that frequency to the office with your clothes on. <laughs> so I think we just got to be very conscious and aware of similar way Amber said, Christine shared, Portia ended with, it's like when we're tuning, it's not just about tuning our own. It's not about going on the roof and just pointing the dish in the right direction. It's making sure that you're not hooked to anybody else's signal. Because the easiest thing to do is get dragged down by others that don't, that aren't aware and don't care. And can I add in, like, just making sure, like, that you're watching your circle, like you're watching it vigilantly yes. to make sure that the people whose energy you are picking up on are going to contribute to your success or your growth. Always, always watch the group around you. That's why I said early in this, like, let's not just be us here. Let's be us everywhere. Let's make several of these groups in our life it doesn't have to be online it doesn't have to be connect it's like let's make more of these everywhere we walk let's make sure that you know we made a choice to show up yesterday because amber and i do, you know for me definitely i i go the other way i go nobody talks to me on mother's day or father's day nobody if amber gets through to me it's 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 rare and it takes a few bit but like nobody so today yesterday was a big step for me so like doing, like, let's make more of those groups because after we were done and the next day, everybody felt good. We all felt good because we were sharing something in a moment that we all were kind of avoiding. But yesterday was turning into a celebration day instead of a, you know, this sucks. Everybody else is celebrating Father's Day. So that's just and an we, example of the moment. We chose to rewrite, re, rewrite, rewrite a narrative. I mean, that's right. it. It's don't have to live in one story it's so stale to like just be in this one story like we can continually right. rewrite our story every single day and it's always the choice how we celebrate our day and the people that we love in ways that we're not abandoning what's right here right now in front of us and showing up vulnerable but who cares let's let's you know make it new 100 percent. that's that's a good example for me yesterday was turning inconvenience into a pleasure you know, it's inconvenient that I don't have my father on this earth, but it's a pleasure that I have an excuse to celebrate him with other people. So this is what I, I want to change um, uh, within myself. And I say it out loud in case it touches anybody else. That's it. It's not a way of life. It's not the way of life. It's my way of life. And uh, if it connects on any level, that's, that's the point. So I appreciate you all. This allows me to become more and more of me every day. So I appreciate you guys for showing up and listening and, and most importantly, being a part of it and participating and sharing your vulnerabilities and trusting me and letting me trust you. So I appreciate you all. I love you all. And we'll see you Monday. Or you can watch it on Friday, Megan. I record all of them. <laughs> all I right, do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right, good night, everybody. Love you. See you. Thank you. Good to see you all.